Good morning. So do you struggle with hunger? If you are maybe tracking calories and you're thinking, oh, I'm just hungry all the time. It may be that your calories are too low, or it could be that you're not choosing foods that are high on what we call the satiety index. So generally as a rule of thumb, these are high fiber, high protein foods, but not always. And something that I would recommend doing is actually Googling satiety index and have a look if you're struggling with hunger, how many of these foods you're actually hitting. So some of the higher foods, actually the highest food is good old boiled potatoes. And you might think, yeah, but that's not high in protein or that high in fiber. And you're right. And it, but on this one, how many boiled potatoes could you actually eat? Like just literally boiled potatoes. Of course, if you slap some mayonnaise on it, some butter on it, some cheese on it, etc., it's a different story. But it's quite interesting in terms of we're scared of carbs. Yet if you look at the good old boiled potato, that has potential there to keep you fullest for the longest period of time, which is quite surprising to me too. But the other foods are generally fish, lean proteins, um, beef, beans, legumes, things like that, um, vegetables, apples, oranges. And it's a good reminder to go, you know, could I maybe increase the satiety index of my diet right now to help keep me full up for longer, to help me feel more satisfied? And a good reminder on a Monday morning, to set that intention in place. But when things go a bit wrong, if you're hungry at that 4 p.m., just think, you know, could I choose one of those foods from the, the higher on the satiety index? Like an apple, orange. No, don't just eat a bowl of boiled potatoes, although it'd probably work. Um, some fish, mackerel, my beloved mackerel, of course. Of course it's there, and I didn't, I didn't bias that in any way. So I hope that helps today, and hope, hope that helps you think a bit differently and simplify nutrition really because it's so confusing these days we think we have to there's something wrong with our metabolism and xyz but actually sometimes we have to go back to what does the research show what do we actually know already and let's do what we already know because i had a chat with someone the other day and they were like yeah i watched your um uh how to overcome um self-sabotage with you and i know i know it all already um well most of it anyway and i said great how much are you doing of it and then it was a different conversation. Well, I don't have time to do this, this. Okay, you don't have to do that. Do this instead, okay. And it's that difference sometimes between focusing on what you can do rather than making it, thinking that it has to be perfect. And the difference, that's a, this is a tangent, but this is one of the main differences sometimes between people who get great results and don't, is that the people who get great results, they never have a quote unquote bad day. And what I mean by that is they do have obstacles. They do have get, things get in the way, but it's not a bad day. They just focus on what they can do and they don't label it as a bad day. Whereas on the other hand, we see that obstacles come up and how we handle them is total reverse. I can't do this now. Maybe it's just too much, not the right timing. And we put it off and things just get worse. So I hope that helps. Any questions, let us know. If you need help with our summer kickstart is going live this week. So any questions, let me know and I'll see you later.